This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. G'day everyone and welcome back to an enormous episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. This is a grand final week and feels like deja vu because this time last year we were previewing the big game and obviously our man, my best mate, uh, the man through the camera, Joshy Dunkley, made the grand final in what might have been one of the greatest preliminary finals that um, a lot of us have seen. I was there in person and it was an incredible game to watch. Uh, we're also very proud of him. We cannot wait to talk to him now, even though I'm introducing him like he's a one-off guest when he is well and truly a part of the Ads and Nuns podcast, and I love him dearly. How are you, mate? Appreciate that uh, very riveting uh, intro. It's nice to be here. Uh, yeah, obviously still alive, so very grateful to be still in the hunt for a, another premiership, which would be awesome, but um, yeah, looking forward to what the week holds, and so far, so good. It's been awesome. That's good. And I must say, I very rudely didn't uh, obviously introduce, we're always brought to you by the Oz American Aces and our wonderful sponsor, Brooks Blooms. I'm just that damn excited. As you can tell, I'm jumping out of your chair, mate. I'm sure Brado's laughing his head off right now, but uh, what a week, mate. What an unbelievable week. Um, this is all going to be about you this episode, and uh, I cannot wait for it to be all about you, nothing about me, because no one gives a shit about me, because it's all good. <laughs> We are just well, pumping on. you up, pumping the Brisbane hang Lions on. up because we love no. the Brisbane Lions this weekend. We love you. Let's go. No, we're not just talking about me. We can talk about you straight away because last night was the Brownlow and mm. you polled 26 votes, which is an amazing effort, mate. So firstly <laughs> off the top, we're not talking about me. We've got to talk about you. So I just wanted to say a massive congrats on that because that's a... That's not easy to do, and a lot of players would, um, yeah, never get that in their careers. So well done on on your year. Uh, it was a, an enormous effort from you, and uh, great to see you on top of the Bulldogs scoreboard. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Well, we've moved on from that. Um, <laughs> you, oh, well, seventh. You know what? Did you come seventh? <laughs> yeah, I came seventh. I was a bit stiff. Yeah, there was a couple there games. <laughs> there was a couple. There was a couple games where I thought I was a shoe in for three, and I didn't get it. But that's all right. Um. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, nah, we'll touch on the Brownlow just quickly because I want to – majority of the episode is going to be about the grand final um, and you. But uh, obviously the grand, uh, the Brownlow, mate, what a oh, – what's your reactions? What's your first reactions? Oh, I mean, it was – yeah, it was one of those crazy vote counts. So we all knew that it was going to be a pretty high-scoring vote count where, you know, potentially Dacos and Cripps both fought it out. But, yeah, Cripper just – Blew me away, to be honest. So the, the amount of votes that he got, I feel like when I reflect on it, I think like you know when you're looking at Carlton, everyone looks to Patrick Cripps, and um, obviously the umpires saw the saw it the same way this year. He had a he had a fantastic year. Not not taking anything away from that, it's just the fact that he got that many votes. I was like, wow, how does that even happen? But um, yeah, congrats to him. Another Brownlow medal to add to his collection and. Nick Dacos pretty stiff to miss out after Oof. breaking the record as well. Yeah. No, I, those thoughts, I totally agree, mate. It's just – it's blown my mind the fact that he could poll f- – I mean, he polled – he was on – him and Heaney, I think, were on 20 votes or whatever it was after – what was it, like 10 rounds or something, 10 or 11 rounds. Yeah. And back in 2005, Ben Cousins won the Brownlow on 20 votes. <laughs> and – yeah, when you think of it in that regard, it's just yeah, it 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 it, it throws the question out there again about um, whether we should help the umpires out a little bit more when it comes to voting because you know there were some games again. I mean, I, I um I spoke to you today. Obviously, we spoke about some games, but there's games where players probably shouldn't have got votes, and then there's games where players missed out on votes who were the best player on the ground, and apparently a lot of that has to do with umpires having no idea about um, stats and whatever it may be, after the game. So I still think it's going to be a talking point going forward. Is anything going to change? Probably not. Next year we might see someone come out and poll more than 45 votes. I would not be surprised because that's just the way it's going. But, yeah, my initial thoughts were the, kind of the same as yours. We'll move on from the Brownlow because 
Well done. Well done, Paddy Cripps again, sorry, as I said. But it's all about you, mate. We're going to firstly talk about the game on the weekend. Uh, what an incredible – mate, that was probably – oh, yeah, best game I reckon I've been to. And I never doubted you boys, I promise you. If Kim was sitting here right here right now, she could vouch for me at half time when – or even during the second or whatever it was when you boys were down by about 30. I said – I just felt like the way you guys were playing – you were playing I, I kind of you had more method around how you guys were playing in a way where Geelong I felt like they were just taking their opportunities like as much as they can when you guys weren't and a lot of their play was oh it was just kind of which is good for them in a way but they were just kind of making it up on the go and I just didn't doubt is I felt like if you guys get a good run on here and you did in the second, I think there was a play where you stuck this tackle and it was a free kick and you boys ended up kicking a goal and it really just all the momentum went your way. Um, and then obviously that last quarter was just one of the more incredible quarters I've seen of footy. And then you mentioned the last four minutes, mate, just spine tingling stuff and me sitting with your with your family, which is I love something I love doing. And um, the, uh, the amount of emotions that they all go through and then – what we were going through, you know, up and down and then obviously flat when um, – who kicked the goal? The Geelong player kicked the goal. Um, Henry, Henry, I think it was. And then obviously, you know, within freaking 30 seconds, you get a goal. You set, Like it, it was just an incredible game. Um, yeah, just talk us through it, mate. Like obviously you you must be – yeah, you must still think about that and pinch yourself. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a great night. Obviously the memory um, – from it was positive and we got the win. So it's hard to really uh, not talk about the bad parts. But I mean, throughout the night, similar to you, like I just had this belief that we could do it. And no matter where we were in the last quarter, I felt like we were always going to get a run on at some point. And to be honest, it's, it sort of felt like a little bit like the week before against the Giants at halftime. Like the way that we came in, we were a bit like, ah, you know, the Cats are playing pretty well, but we're not playing that great. So we always had that inner belief that at some point we would come. And, you know, after half time, I thought they kicked the first goal. But then from there, it was all our momentum and, um, yeah, managing to kick a score to, to be up by a couple of goals, I think, at, at uh, three quarter time. And then they came back and we came back again at the end. So it was a bit of a seesawing contest. But the way that we played and the way the boys adjusted throughout the night, I think, was just incredible and um, gives us huge belief that no matter where we are this weekend or in future games that we can win and I think that's the most important thing you know you look at guys across the field um, might not have been having their best game on the night but stood up in their own moment like you know last quarter Cam Rayner you know half time I saw I heard that he wasn't getting much or having much influence but then after the half time he's dominated the game so it's just like those little things are you know what it's like when you're out there, you can get in your head and be like, oh, geez, it's not my night tonight and just, you know, give up. But for guys to really stick at it and, you know, continue to do the little things for the team, I think that's what really stood out for us. And we're going to need that this Saturday against the Swans because they're going to be a very hard team to beat. Yeah, well, I think you you well and truly nailed that. I I totally agree with, um, you know, the fact that you're able to have players stand up when – as you said, first half wasn't going well. And I mentioned, you mentioned, sorry, Cam Rayner. I think Zach Bailey is another one um, who in the second half had some incredible moments. Could have kicked five. Um, yep. I think Cal Archie is another one. He had some enormous moments. And everyone's going to think of, you know, the goal he kicked um, to put you guys back up. But it wasn't just that. It was a lot of stuff. Like, he just does a lot of things that go unnoticed. And watching as a fan, I was watching the game as a fan, a lot of stuff he does, like his running patterns, um, the way he opens up space for other players, like things that he does goes unnoticed. You don't see it. You know, all you see is the the left foot snap and whatever it was when he kicked the goal, whatever foot it was. Um, it just must give you great confidence. Um, it, also, you mentioned um, Cam Rayner. Like his ability to mentally put the first half behind him and, you know, Probably knew he wasn't going well. He'd only had four disposals. I was just, I, I read something. He'd only had four disposals. He was getting bagged on Twitter or whatever it's called nowadays. I think it's called X or something nowadays, but getting bagged. And then he comes out and has 18 and kicks three or whatever it is in the second half. Like it just must give you the utmost amount of confidence knowing that you're always going to be in the game regardless. And especially in a game this week where it's the biggest game of, of your lives. Yeah. Well, I think that's the point. Like the way that, you know, 
you see all these good teams over the past few years, you know, you think of the Hawthorns, the Richmonds, like they weren't the most talented teams, but they were the best teams. Like they played for each other and everyone stood up in their own individual moment, whenever it was, whatever it was, like they just got it done. Mm. And there's that, there's that feeling amongst this group that, you know, yes, we've got a lot of talent, but now we're really starting to see the team aspects of our game and we're really playing for each other, which is, I believe what finals footy is all about. And um, yeah, like I said, hopefully we can go out there this Saturday and repeat what we did on um, last Saturday against the Cats because I think that'll help us, uh, you know, go a long way into hopefully what is a win for us. Yep. And I, I, it is how finals footy is played. You nailed that. A couple of other things. I think it's probably the best game I've seen Ryan Lester play. Froggy, you guys call him Froggy because I'm was i obviously sitting with the, uh, the Brisbane families and everyone's yelling out Froggy, which is pretty cool. Um, but, mate, I personally think it's the best game I've seen him play. Um, he was, especially when, as I said, Geelong were making the most of their opportunities and there were times in the third when they, well, you guys had a lot of momentum and then they would, you know, get one back and then you guys would kick a couple and then they'd almost pepper again Geelong. But he would just constantly stand up and stand up, win some crucial one-on-ones, position himself where – you know, they they look like they're out the back, but he takes an aggressive position and wins the ball back. Just did things that um, were invaluable for you boys. I think that bled out to obviously, you know, Andrews obviously played an extremely good game and, and the rest of your defenders. Uh, you mentioned Stasevich as well, who, you know, gets a hard job every single week. I think he was matched up on Stengel um, for majority of it. But, mate, it, yeah, I could keep going on. Uh, Kyle Lohman's another one, a guy that, you know – brings in so much energy and enigma. It looks like he's such a fire starter for you guys. And um, I reckon people see, you know, the the, the hangers and the goals and, and the goals from the boundary. But again, watching from afar, mate, his pressure, his ability to chase, his, his want to chase and um, really cause a turnover and get the ball back, it just speaks volumes about him, but speaks volumes, as you said, about the buy-in and you guys wanted to do it for each other. Yeah, you're totally right. I think the way that, you know, you mentioned Froggy off the top, but you could go around our whole side and probably pick out certain times where everyone was doing something for each other and um, that's the beauty of it. I feel like when that happens, it just clicks. And right now I feel like we're in that position where we're just clicking and it's it's awesome to feel that out there and um, gives you so much confidence and so much belief that, like I said earlier, you can win it from no matter where you are. So, Hopefully, uh, yeah, as I said, bring it on Saturday. But uh, it was a great prelim final win, one of the probably the best that I've been involved in. Uh, thinking back to 2016, it was probably a similar type game, that one, uh, against the Giants down in Sydney. But, um, yeah, well and truly looking forward to the week and what it brings. And hopefully, uh, yeah, we're happy at the end of it. What? So right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What was the better prelim final win? Because that is a good one. Because that's your first year, 2016. Against yeah. the odds, and again, similar situation against the odds. Jeez, what am I going to pick? You have to pick Washington. one, mate. Come on. Oh, that is a great question. 2016 or this one? I feel like this one, we were a lot further down at one point, whereas 2016 was just neck and neck the whole time. I reckon they might have got up by two goals in the last quarter, whereas we were up at three-quarter time in this one. So mm. I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick this one because it's more current. It's more current, this one. And, yeah, recency um, biased. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I feel like it was a very special win and the journey that we've been on so far, similar to 16, has been unbelievable. So hopefully we can finish it off white with you then. Yep. Uh, last one for the game of the weekend. Big O. How's he, uh, mate, my heart went out to him as soon as I seen him go down. I thought they're going to try and get him back out here, but like he's not going to he's not going to be well. You could just see the way he was running around, like he was really hindered and felt like it was one of the more heroic, if you want to call it, things I've seen. He was really, really trying his ass off and you could just see the pain that it was in and it was absolutely devastating to see him obviously hurt himself again. How's he going, the big fella? Nah, he's he's going okay now. He's actually completely fine now. He's just a bit sore in the shoulder. But such, mate, when you think about club stalwarts and the way that, the culture is and he just epitomizes that he's such a an incredible guy you know everyone sees him for his on-field stuff and probably at times he gets a bit angry on field but he's not like that off field like he's a gentle giant and 
Um, we all love him and yeah, it's going to be sad not to have him out there on the weekend, but I'm sure everyone, and I mean everyone in, in the back of their mind will be thinking of him because he, he deserves all the credit that he can get. Um, hopefully we can, you know, celebrate with him afterwards, but it's, it's just, yeah, it's such a sad story. I feel like there is one every year of, you know, grand final teams where someone misses out through injury mm. or selection or mm. whatever it might be. So hopefully, um, yeah, our hats go off to Big O for the, the way that he came back into the game and tried to do everything he could for us. But um, unfortunately, yeah, he went down again. And, oh, mate, I know that feeling where you do a double shoulder. Do you remember that one that I did in Canberra that day? Of course it's I do. a shocking feeling and it was horrendous. So, yeah, completely understand what he's going through. And, um, yeah, I just hope he's okay. And I know he's going to be supporting us through the whole journey this week and, um, yeah, going to give us absolutely everything that he's got even though he won't be out there on Saturday. So um, love Big O and what he brings to our team. So hopefully, uh, yeah, we can be – we can do him proud this weekend. Hopefully you can, and I agree with everything you say. Um, speaking of love, I, f- I feel like I've found a – found a well, I'm not going to say new love, but I've met someone who there could be a lot of love there, and that is uh, one of your teammates, Tom Duday. So I haven't met him yet, yeah. but uh, he was sitting in front of me at the game and um, obviously we started talking and within about – Two or three minutes, he mentioned NFL fantasy, and I was like, "NFL fantasy? You uh, you into NFL fantasy?" And anyway, we ended up talking for the whole half time about NFL fantasy and all the leagues we're in, and they're getting up at two fifty in the morning, and you know the keepers and how long you've been doing it for. So there's a um, there's a bit of a man crush there. He uh, he said to me today that it, he spoke to you on the weekend about at the game about fantasy. <laughs> so it was pretty funny actually because he was like, "Oh, geez." I didn't realize Ads liked NFL so much. Like we were just talking NFL the whole game. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah, mate. I can talk anyone in NFL. Um, yeah. So, well, that's it from the prelim because I could keep asking questions, and I don't want to about the prelim because we we are going to make this a short, sharp podcast uh, for our listeners. Firstly, did you watch the Sydney prelim final? I, I know you did, but like, what was your thought? Obviously, you guys had to win on the Saturday, but what was your Initial thoughts from that game? Nah, I watched it all. Um, uh, I probably I thought that, yeah, Port were always going to be up against it. Uh, I did actually, I think I tipped Port last week, but just to sort of throw a spanner in the works. And I, yeah, I mean, the Swans played the way that they have played most of the year and um, were really impressive with their ball movement off half back and just taking the game on. So it was a very impressive outing from them. And yeah, I thought they were. Um, yeah, they just did exactly what they needed to do to, to get into a grand final. So hopefully, uh, yeah, they're not that good this weekend and we can slow them down a little bit. But I was pretty impressed by what they produced on Friday night. Yep, I, I was too, considering they had the week off as well and I felt like they really hit the ground running and ooh, they looked very, very dangerous and their midfielders uh, got on top real early. Um, well, that obviously leads me into the next bit, which is the probably the preview of the granny mate which is what everyone wants to hear. Uh, you've played Sydney once this year, I believe, which was that round 19 ripper where you guys won by a point when Sydney were – was it a point you won by? Yeah, two points. Yeah, two points maybe, two points. I remember watching that because I was – I reckon I was in a hotel, so I would have been playing Adelaide. Um, and, yeah, I just thought this is a ripping game and you guys ended up getting on top. But firstly, have you guys looked into that um, – game much because it is it is pretty recent yeah it's we, we've looked at it definitely we we did some opposition analysis today and talked about swans and um you know what we learned from them last time and how we feel like we might be able to get them this time but yeah that, that was a that game was very close i remember we started well and then the second quarter they came back and you know we're flying and then we managed to sort of be neck and neck the whole game and come out on top in the end but uh, if 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 this Saturday is anything like that, it's going to be a cracking game of footy. Yeah, it certainly will be. Um, well, how does the week then look for you guys in preparation for them? Not not the not the um, grand final parade and all that stuff. I'm more talking from a footy sense. We do a little bit more analysis Thursday, your main session, and then you know get your matchups, whatever it may be, because you know this week's obviously going to drag out in a good way. Um, in a very good way because it's grand final week. You love it, but it always drags out. Mm. Yeah, well, we – so like I said, we did some uh, oppo analysis today and then 
tomorrow we actually fly to Melbourne. So we get tomorrow where we just normal routine. So don't do any vision or anything like that because it's a normal day off. Thursday we'll practice, you know, what Sydney do. So what and how we're going to do it, like use that against them and um, manipulate things out of the training track to sort of semi, I don't know, what do you call it, shadow and be like them and then we play our way. So there'll be little things that happen on Thursday at the main session that um, we're really trying to work on and focus on for the game on on Saturday afternoon. But um, after that, it's probably more individual edits and you know, looking at matchups and who you might be playing on. And for us, you know, we're going to come up against the – the big three, I guess you could call them, is Golden, Heaney, and Warner, who were all mid twenties last night in the in the Brownlow Medal, which is pretty impressive when you think about the midfield. And um, yeah, very, very, very keen to take it up to the best this weekend. But that's a little insight into how we uh, how we operate throughout the week. That's a uh, yeah, a nice uh, little plan for you guys. You mentioned matchups, obviously. Um, mm. I mean, I can't imagine like they're not the because they have three stars in there, it's not the, you know, Patrick Cripps, you're going to just sit on Patrick Cripps or Mark Spontempelli, you're going to sit on him. I'm sure you're going to find yourself probably probably more so matched up on Warner and um, and Heaney more than anything. But I can imagine there'll be plans around those boys because think back to last week's final, they were freaking unbelievable. Heaney's playing on a whole new level at the moment and he's obviously a real danger against you boys. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be more situational than anything, but you've seen... I think we've all seen teams in the past that have really challenged them, have gone after Goulden, uh, Warner and Heaney, like all different guys. And um, so for us, it's about, you know, obviously prioritizing certain ones over others and trying to really manipulate what they're doing to use it into our advantage. Because I think that's the way, you know, the grand final is going to be played is on momentum and um, big players are going to stand up in, different moments and and do their thing. So being able to limit those moments for the opposition is is what we'll be looking to do. Yeah. Uh, are you thinking from, from their point of view, do you reckon James Jordan goes to Zorko or do you reckon he goes to Lockie? I think maybe Jordan goes to Zorko and potentially Robottom goes to Lockie. That's I agree. my early prediction. If I was – if I was coming up against Brisbane, the way that Zorko's playing, and Lockie's playing obviously very well as well, but Zorks is a real um, setter-upper of the play, <laughs> if that makes zero sense, but really, really sets the play up for you boys. And again, he was an enormous um, enigma for you guys on the weekend. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, all right. Where – a couple more questions on this. Where, where do you feel like you guys can get him? Where do you reckon – yeah, what's the area for you boys thinking? Hopefully, if you can get this down pat, it'll give you guys a big chance to, um, you know, win this game of footy. Well, the most obvious one is the midfield battle. Like I think, like I said, though, their big three around the ball, Heaney, Warner and Goulden are all – they're really important to them and you can tell that. Like the way that they polled last night, is, again, was – incredible and you know if you take that away from them and don't give them that strength that they've got then hopefully that'll help us a lot um so the first one would be around the ball i would say and then yep. the second one yeah hopefully being able to use the the space of the mcg too like you know on our ball movement they're going to be hard to defend so slowing them down and then being able to win the ball back and and get get it forward into into our forward line is going to be important too. So using the space of the G like we did last week against the Cats and just making it up as we go along, I feel like that's going to be the well, part of the element that's going to help us um, come out on top. But, yeah, the Swans are – that's not taking anything away from the Swans because they have been really impressive this year and we all know what their best footy is, it, well, looks like and feels like. So um, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of that on the weekend. It's just about how we're going to be able to weather that storm. Yeah, no, I, I, it is a good answer, mate. It's not. I know you're a bit like oh, taking things away from Sydney. You're not at all. It's a great answer. I think it's a little great insight because you're not. There's no um, disrespect in a way to Sydney. That's just the obvious. If we can do this in our regard, we're going to go a long way to winning. So. Um, great answer. I feel like everything you said, I totally agree. And, and I think the space helps you guys a lot. It's obviously very different to um, playing at the SCG and, and playing at the Gabba. So um, there's a bit of evenness there, which is which is really good. Um, last one, I guess, on the game. This is more for you. Um, mm-hmm. 
How are you feeling? I mean, obviously, this is now your fourth grand final. Yes, fourth grand final. Your second one now at Brisbane Lions. You've um, obviously lost your last two. Um, yeah, this is your third one. Uh, well, third one in the last four years, whatever it is. How are you feeling? It must be. I know you probably think about it more than, more than uh, probably after the game more than anything. But um, yeah, you must. You must sit back and think. You know whether you're lucky. I wouldn't say that. I feel like you bring success where you go because of the player and person that you are. You bring that with you, and it's a reflection on you as as the individual. And I know there's obviously 22 players in a team, but um, you must be feeling extremely proud about um, where you are because you know if I can speak of my proudness for you, um, mate, I'd, I'd be here for an hour explaining it. So you must be very very proud. Yeah, I mean, thanks, mate. Appreciate the the kind words, but I'm I am proud. I mean, to make a another grand final, and like you said, it's my fourth one. Um, thinking about it, yeah, you sort of I feel like you never get used to it the way that it all happens and unfolds, and the excitement, the nervous energy that you get. I was probably as nervous now than what I am or what I was in 2016. So my first one, and um. Yeah, you just, I think the difference is the experience that you have. So, you know, you get nervous, but you've got the confidence that you can go out there and perform on the biggest yeah. stage that there is in Australian football. Um, yep. So, yeah, I think that's the really the only difference, but same same thing, same process. I'm not really thinking about it too much at the moment. Uh, when it gets closer to the game, I will be, but just excited, mate. I feel like we are in a really good position. And as I said last week, you know, I feel like our team, even our whole footy club has grown so much over the past 12 months. And, um, yeah, it's going to hold us in really good stead, not only this week, but uh, heading into the future as well. So very proud to be involved in another grand final. And, um, yeah, hopefully it can be a, another grand final win. I hope so too. Uh, who you've got – who have you got coming? Um, I can imagine it all – everyone from Yarram will be there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, who who's, who's important that's coming for you? Uh, so I've got mum and dad, uh, Tipper, Lara, Kaiser, Emily, Kaiser's partner, um, all my aunties and uncles pretty much. Uh, and that's it really. So there's about – and I think mum – well, dad has – oh, he's got, what, five or six brothers and sisters. So there's a few <laughs> sitting there and um, – Managed to get a few tickets, mate. So all of its family and, yeah, I'm just excited to to have them there. I sent them a message, you know, asking if they wanted a ticket the other day and just, you know, obviously thanking them for all their support and, um, yeah, seeing if they wanted to come down and watch. So I know they'll uh, they'll all be there cheering us on as much as they can and um, being loud and probably hearing them from the ground. But um, it'll be awesome to have them there and hopefully, yeah, it's celebrating at the end of the day too with them all. I hope so too. Uh, last one for the whole week, grand final parade. That is probably the highlight of the whole week, which I think back to my one and only grand final parade that I've had, 2018. That was, again, one of the highlights of of um, playing in a grand final. Yeah, again, you must be looking forward to that because it's really cool being able to um, – and I think this year they're going to go all out yet again. Last year was apparently really cool. You were a part of that. But this year I think they're going all out again. You must be super excited for that. Yeah, very excited. The last year was insane because Collingwood were playing and they were very passionate supporters, those ones. So you caught the fair bit of flack over the fence, which was uh, somewhat motivating, but some somewhat a bit taking back. Like you sort of like, oh, shit. <laughs> you don't know what to say, <laughs> but um, no, everyone was – you know what? Everyone last year was talking to me about you. They are like, say hi to Adzi for me. Go oh, Pies. <laughs> <laughs> How good. They all love still that. love you, mate. But no, it is. It's a, it's a great experience and I'm fairly sure I'm sitting in the back of the ute with Logan Morris this time. So that'd be cool to sort of show him through his first grand final parade in his first year of footy, similar to what I did with Matty Boyd back in the day uh, in my first year. So um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see all the fans and supporters there on the day. And yeah, after that, it's just business, back to business and yeah. See you at the game. True. Well, I can't wait to see you, mate, because as you said, you're coming down tomorrow. Uh, so I will wish you all the very best, obviously, probably tomorrow. Then, sorry, not tomorrow, Thursday, then obviously the day of the game. And I'll be there, mate. You know, I'll, I'll always be there and I'll be cheering in the crowd. But from everyone here at the uh, on the Ads and Dunks podcast, we have um, some great fans and 
Brado as well, and Tommy and everyone who helps out. Um, we all want to wish you all the very best. We love you. As as I said, it feels like deja vu, but hopefully there's another special podcast after this week that clearly means that um, you've won the grand final and, and you can bring on that premiership medal. But we'll be cheering you on, mate. I'll be cheering you on like always. You know how much I love you and how proud I am of you. So I wish you all the very bloody best and I hope you get the win. Thanks, mate. I appreciate all the support that you give me. I tell you that all the time. And um, yeah, everyone that supports me, I'm really appreciative of that. So thank you. Uh, yeah, hopefully we get out there and get it done, eh? Hopefully. Uh, well, we may as well still do our two little segments before we wrap it up. Oh, you've, we've obviously got a couple of surprises. Uh, sorry. Yeah, well, surprises for people. But our um, we'll give some love first. I want to give some love to uh, Froggy Ryan Lester. I think it's a no-brainer for me. He, as I said to you earlier, I'm not going to repeat myself, but I just thought he was unbelievable. And we've done how many weeks now? It's been about 26 weeks of giving some love to someone, and he's the last person I'm giving love to for the year for the season of 2024. And I, as I said, I thought he was unbelievable. So I want to give some love to Ryan Lester. Yeah, I like it, mate. I'll, I'll give some love to another teammate of mine, and that's Cal Archie. I think he's... He's one of the most underrated players in the competition, the way that he can play football. And he's done a few jobs for us over the year and um, been able to execute that as well as impacting the game himself. And we all saw the important goal that he kicked to put us back in front in the prelim final on Saturday night. So, yeah, he's just the ultimate team player. No fuss about him. Just goes out there and gets his job done every week. And I just feel like he needs some love. So, if anyone out there wants to shoot him a text or a message, make sure you do because he's um he's very important to us. Agreed. Uh, our Brooks Bloom of the Week. Very, very, very last Brooks Bloom of the Week, which again, I'm giving Brooke another shout out. We love her very, very much. Um, You can start, mate. You start us off with your Bloom of the Week. Well, mine's Big O, mate, and I know we talked about him earlier, but I just thought the way that he um, sort of came back out during the game and could have easily just wrapped things up and thought, you know what, stuff this, I'm not – putting my body at risk and I've just popped my shoulder out and it's out of place and hard to get back in. And uh, the way that he was able to come back out of the ground and put his body on the line for our team and our club was just incredible. And I feel like he de- deserves a lot of credit for that. And as I said before, he's one of the stalwarts of our club and um, yeah, he just epitomizes our trademark and what we're all about. So I feel like, yeah, my bloom of the week is the big O this week. I love it, mate. I I was tossing up between a few because it's the last of the season or well, the year for me and I want to finish on a good note and I thought maybe I'll go down the AFL path. So I thought about Tom Hawkins obviously retiring. He was going to be my bloom of the week. Um, but, you know, he's not. Uh, he did have a great career. So well done, Tom Hawk. I then went down the horse racing path. I thought, do I end on horse racing? Fangirl, my goodness gracious me, what a race she had on the weekend. Looked unbelievable. Was a joy to watch. But... Outside of Kim, outside of Georgie, outside of you, uh, my other love in life, uh, the NFL. I thought I'm going to end on the NFL, my bloom of the week. And it's actually going to a player in today's Buffalo Bills v. the Jacksonville Jaguars game. I'm not sure if you were able to watch that. I don't think you were because um, of uh, your footy commitments. But DeMar Hamlin, he had an interception today, mate. So he had an interception and you know the story obviously of DeMar. He obviously, well, essentially nearly died, you know, basically got resuscitated on the field. And firstly, the fact that he was able to get back and live a normal life and now secondly, be out there and, um, you know, be able to play and have an interception, his first interception in his career, I just thought what an incredible moment for him. So... That is my last Brooks Bloom of the Week for season 2024. I wanted to end on an NFL, so that's my Bloom of the Week. Nah, I love it, mate. Love it. Uh, Our winners from last week's question or thing on the YouTube channel. So we asked them to do our prediction for the week, so who was going to win. And I actually got a couple of really good ones. So Amelia Turnbull. Hey, boys, love the potty. I reckon Sydney will win by 20. And Brisbane will win by 10. So we actually won by 10. Yep. And Sydney, what did is, what is Sydney win by in the end? 36. 36. So we'll give it to her. We'll give it to her. And then the other one was at 
Carly Lads, 4777. Swans by 23. Lions by 15. That was another close one. So those two are our winners this week uh, for our prize pack. So we'll be in touch and get those out to you shortly. But we do have another giveaway or another big announcement to make, and that is that we are giving two pairs, so signed pairs of boots away to our lucky winners. And that will be announced on Thursday night, I think it was, with uh, with through the Oz American Aces channel. So make sure you keep your eyes out. And if you want to get a signed pair of boots from me and Ads, uh, there's two of them, obviously one of mine and one of Adzi's pairs. And, um, yeah, you can go in the winning to win that. So make sure you tune in to uh, the podcast – or not the podcast, the Oz American Aces channel on Thursday night. Love it, mate. Uh, we clearly know that yours are going to be a lot more valuable than mine because <laughs> you're about to play in a grand final and my boots haven't touched the grass in about four weeks, however long it's been. So uh, enjoy those. Whoever gets Dunks's boots, you'll love them. Yours will go for more, mate. You've just polled 26 <laughs> votes in the Brownlow medal come seventh. <laughs> what an achievement, mate. I've come seventh. I'm going to hang. I'm going to talk about that for the rest of my life <laughs> when they bring something out. What's your proud of achievements? Coming seventh in the Brownlow. <laughs> well, that's it, mate. That's it for the that's it for the uh, for the year. I'll let you sign off as you always do. But again, from all of us here, all the very best. I uh, hope there's another episode in us because we're going to do a special episode if you uh, if you win and get the chocolates, which we're all praying. And I hope you win, mate. I'll be there cheering. So good luck. Well, what, what's your thank you, mate? But what's your prediction? What do you reckon is going to happen on the weekend? I want to hear it. Oh, <laughs> Sydney by forty. Yeah, there you go. No, I'm oh, come joking. On. I'm joking. Um. Oh, well, obviously I'm back in you boys. I'm I'm clearly back in you boys. I think I think it's gonna be a close game. You're right. You said back and forth, back and forth. It's definitely gonna be one of those games. Most grand finals are like that. Um, and I think you guys are, are meeting each other. You talk about peaking and playing and and um, being at the really pointy end and and playing your best footy up to that stage. You guys are well and truly there. It's not like you know you've seen teams that have kind of limped to the grand final, you boys are both peaking. And it's really exciting because we're going to get the best version of, you, best version of yourself. I think I think the midfield battle is where it's at, as you said. I know what you're like, uh, all selfishness, which you don't have a lick of it in you, but it all goes out the window and you'll do everything you can to stop either Heaney or Warner, wherever you're on. Um, and I just am backing you boys to the hill. I'm going to say... You guys by 10 points. My Norm Smith medalist, I'm always going to say you, mate, so I'm giving you the Norm Smith. Uh, if you weren't, weren't going to win it, I'm going to say a forward like Joe Danaher. Uh, but I'm backing you and Brisbane by 10 points. Oh, actually, let's get Brado on before you wrap it up because it could be the last time we hear Brado and we probably don't have much for him to <laughs> contribute today. But I'd love for him... Firstly, for him to, to hear his voice on the last episode because we love him. And secondly, I want to hear his predictions. Jeez, that's grim. It might be the last time we hear me. I'm going to walk outside, get hit by a bus or something. I was very interested. I'm going to enter that competition because I want to get Adam Trelaw's boots in an all-Australian year. Wow, what a season he's had. It's been incredible. Uh, number one pole getter at the Dogs. We love to see it. I put Brisbane in there to get the win, and I will give Cal Archie best on. I reckon his final series is has been phenomenal. He, it has been. I hope He might be. He might pip Heaney for best player of the final series. If he, I don't know where he sits in the in the votes, but hopefully he gets the job done because he's had an incredible final series. Good luck on the weekend. I hope you hear from me again. Uh, if I don't, I hope so too. You can have my PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got for you. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Brado. Thanks, Brado. Nah, love it, mate. We'll wrap it up there then. Um, thanks for another year. It's been awesome. And thank you to all our loyal fans out there that tune in every week and, uh, yeah, listen to us talk a bit of shit. So thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Ciao. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.